Welcome to the channel. This will be a reading focused on the energy of Amber Lynn Reed. If you are um, sensitive to topics having to do with EDs, mental illness, things of that nature, this is your trigger warning. Because um, this is a reading on Amber Lynn Reed. I did a reading the other day on Chantal, the foodie beauty. I don't think I gave a warning with that, but I should have. Um, if there are any questions that I didn't ask in that video or in this video that you want me to ask about these people, leave it in the comment section of the video. So if I do a part two to those readings, I uh, will know what you guys want me to ask. If you're new here, uh, my name's Melissa. I peek through the blinds of the person on your mind. I like to be a fly on the wall. So, going to peek through the blinds of Amber Lynn Reed's mind and see what the cards say. This is for entertainment only, guys, okay? And let's all be nice, please. I try to be as respectful as I can be, but I'm going to ask the cards questions, and I'm going to tell you what the cards mean and what I feel from them. So, can you show me Amberlynn's current energy? Show me what represents Amberlynn currently, please. What represents Amberlynn? The Queen of Blades. Okay, well, in this deck, this card makes me feel like um, a person that, like, has cut off their nose to spite their face. That's the first thing I feel and think when I see this card. The Queen of uh, Blades is the Queen of Swords. This is someone that mm, is on the, can be defensive, um is defensive and in a way where they might feel like it's coming from a place where they're trying to protect themselves, but it might be viewed by the outside as someone that is defensive, you know, un maybe unnecessarily defensive, okay? Um, well, this is what's representing her currently, so she might be feeling uh, like she's being attacked, that she has to defend herself. And she might be using her words in a sharp way. Sometimes I, ref I say in general the sword energy. Sometimes when it's a person is uh, someone that is not using their words as wisely as they should be. Swords are about clarity and truth. So we'll look deeper. Um, I wanted to ask. I'm going to ask some questions that are similar to what I uh, asked in my reading for Foodie Beauty Chantal. So I want to know how... Show me what represents Amber Lynn's childhood, how she s sees her childhood, and how it maybe has shaped her into the person she is today. Can you tell me about her childhood? Oh, that's too much. I just want the gist of it, not half the deck. I'm sure there's a lot going on there in that childhood. Just show me about a little bit, please, of what represents how Amberlyn feels or views her childhood and how it maybe shaped her. The Four of Swords is um, represents a person that has been through a battle and is in like a meditative state. Like there, there, there are things about her childhood that. She feels like she had been through a battle, maybe even, like, survived the childhood. But even though she probably shares whatever to her audience, there's things about it that she actually, I'm going to say this card is saying that she keeps to herself. Or how deeply and how maybe how incredibly affected she was by her younger years, she might keep to herself a little bit. She might even feel like it destroyed the person she would have become. 
um, like change the who she would have become. Uh, the things that happened in her younger years. That's what I felt. King of Discs, the Page of Discs, the Seven of Swords, the Five of Cups. So, I'm going to say that this represents masculine energy in her younger years. And uh, the King of Discs is the King of Pentacles. Um, should be a energy that, or a person that is nurturing to a certain degree that has stability, right? Like discs, pentacles, if you're not familiar with tarot, has to do with like money, stability, things of that, that nature. And then I have my page of, uh, of discs here. For me, this is like a, this could represent a person that's kind of strategic. It reminds me of a chess piece. It also reminds me of a person that can't see, that can't fully see with this helmet on. Um, they might be shielded, they're not fully opened. Um, this could be saying to me that I think this experiences from her childhood, her younger years, maybe not feeling protected by, mas by masculine energy. Um, maybe becoming closed off and feeling like they had to be more strategic in life, like how they dealt with uh, masculine energies specifically. This here is my sneaky seven. So this is either saying that the things that happened to them when they were younger um shaped them into a more sneaky person into things that happened when they were younger may have made them feel like they had to be more closed off like they had to have a shield up um may have made them feel like they had to lie in order to uh to survive that's what i felt so Or that this person, that Amber Lynn, f felt like they were lied to, deceived, cheated. Um, for me, the seven is a liar, um, a sneak, sometimes a thief, okay? So, I feel like, um, and I don't normally feel this when I get this card, but I feel like Amber Lynn feels like her pieces of herself were stolen from her that like this could be where the beginnings of her having like a side that lies even to themselves um kind of thing i feel really strongly about the seven of swords if you watch my readings you know that but i'm, I'm feeling really strongly that this is also talking about her feeling like her pieces of herself were stolen, that she was lied to, um, that she dealt with sneaky energies. She might have felt like everyone around her was a like a sneaky seven energy, sneaky seven of swords type energy. Um, and this is the five of cups. So this is like an energy or person that sees what they don't have instead of what they do have kind of thing. So this could have, this could be suggesting that, because I'm asking, you know, how does she see her childhood and how it shaped her to the person she is today? Um, cups have to do with emotions, love. This could be like saying that the masculine energies that she felt did not protect her or that took advantage of her when she was younger were strategic in their ways of treating her um, maybe feeling like like I said you know things were stolen from her pieces of her taken um, 
made it so that's why now maybe as an adult or as she got older, you know, it was easier for her to lie to herself about certain things. Um, and it's maybe why she might be viewed as a person that doesn't look at what she does have, you know, focuses on what she doesn't have. Sometimes for me, this is the person that purposefully knocks the cups over. Um, so it could be talking about how, how she kind of like, not only doesn't see things that she does have when she has it, but chooses to focus on the empty cups. Okay, so this would be, like I said before, um, representing how Amber Lynn f feels about her childhood, um, the way it's shaped her into the person she is today. She might actually um, have an awareness, but like keeps it to herself. Um, this is the death card. It's the Scorpio energy. It represents permanent endings. Sometimes it represents someone passing. Um, this is the high priestess. This, sometimes I, so this is the energy that for me has a connection with the higher power. And, like, knows, knows things and doesn't need to share it with any, like, it's enough for this energy to know what it knows. It doesn't have a desire necessarily to share its knowledge with, with anyone. That's how I sometimes feel about this, this high priestess card when it represents a person. Um, sometimes I say it represents a person that maybe thinks too highly of themselves or that other people like in relationship reading sometimes when I get this card I'll say the person might look at this energy like uh, you're on your high horse kind of like you think you know everything um, kind of energy so when it has to do with how her childhood how she sees it and how it influenced her into the person she is today this could be saying that there was, uh, I just felt it, so I'll say it, um, an actual death of what could have been a person that she viewed as holy in her eyes, almost. A person that maybe, maybe was religious or is religious. You know, if they're, if they're not actually passed, it could rep the death card could represent the permanent ending of that connection. Um, if they, you know, didn't cross over. But I just felt that, so I'm just saying it. Um, and she could keep that to herself. That could have really influenced her as a person. Um, it could be why maybe if she doesn't have a relationship with the higher power, that she kind of turns her back to that connection with a higher power. Um, because of the loss or the or the finalization of a connection with someone that maybe made her feel more connected to and just made her feel alive, you know, um, I felt that so. Okay. Put these back. Um, the next thing I'm gonna ask is. Is Amber Lynn, does she see herself as, because I wasn't sure how to ask this, does she see herself as an honest person? Because I know there's a lot of um, videos about her being um, possibly a narcissist. And I've said this, if you watch my readings, certain cards do make me sometimes feel nurse, narcissistic energy. But I'm really careful about narcissists, like, talking about that because narcissism, there's, like, seven different types of narcissism, and it's a true mental illness. And sometimes it's similar to, um, BP, borderline personality, 
type of mental illness. So, and sometimes other things overlap. And so I, I try to be careful with that, but I wasn't, so that's why I'm going to ask this question. Does, does Amber Lynn see herself as an honest energy? Like in life, with her friends, her family, even her father, in general. Does Amberlynn see herself as an honest person? Right, the death card's on the bottom. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that yet. So, oh, if you came out here. Okay. So this is the Nine of Coins. Which uh, represents, it's like an independent energy that is happy being single and financially stable. Like, doesn't need anyone, kind of, and like, that's what it represents. The cups. This is the Ace of Cups, which is like... Aces are new beginnings. Cups are all about emotions and love. Does she see herself as an honest person? Um, the world. This is a card about, like, sometimes moving. Sometimes has to do with online things. Like, sometimes it's, um... It definitely represents a new beginning. But in this card you see it's like a, like a moth in its larvae, kind of like the it's closed off in itself. The Four of Wands, this is about connections with other energies, sometimes moving in with people, engagements. The Hierophant, this sometimes makes me think of marriage when I see it with certain cards. It definitely represents... Um, a higher power, like either a person that we look to for guidance. Make, this is making me feel like someone taking care of her because of just, I just felt that. And it's ending with justice. I think she's a Libra. This is Libra energy. And this kind of looks like a widow to me with the, you know, the I'm seeing this death card here. So let me feel this here, because this was kind of a weird... Uh, so this is like, does she see herself as an honest person? Well, I'm going to say that... Uh, when I'm holding these, and I know what these cards mean... This could be her recognizing that she's like not an independent energy, that she requires someone to help carry her, carry her, okay? Um, that she doesn't, if she's not in a connection, if she's forced to be, like, independent, that she feels, like, hollow. That she, yeah, that's what I'm feeling from that. Um... This world card. Now, when this, if this world card's representing the connection to the outside world, like, so, in this card, right, this is a creature that has wings. It should be flying, but it's not. It's, it's wrapped itself up, and it's kind of just like, that's kind of like her, right? Like, the world is out there, but she's just, like, wrapped up in herself kind of thing. That's what I'm feeling. She could really desire connection, like, a legit connection. Or she closes herself off to recognizing how she can't function if she's not in a connection. I think her not being in a connection with another person affects her not only her ability to have any sort of independence, to get around, to do anything, um, but that she requires that in order to survive emotionally, 
and to a certain degree, not only financially, like financially and emotionally. Um, these could be things that, like, she's lying to herself about, I'm feeling. Like, she wants to come across like she can be independent to a certain degree, but she's, she can't. Like, she needs that helping hand. Um, and she might recognize that because of the way this card looks, just makes me feel like she might recognize deep down either she lies to herself about this or, or she keeps it to herself deep down that she realizes the other people, the energies that she has relationships with, um, enable her to kind of like a certain degree or she might tell herself that, that those, she can't be fully independent without someone else to help her, but that at the same time, she might deep down look at them as an enabler to some degree, if that makes sense. And I'm going to say she definitely, this represents the way she closes herself off to the outside world and might just hyper-focus on connections, like connections that she views as marriage-type relationships. Because for me, the Four of Wands, especially when I see it with, like, the Hierophant, when I see it with cer other certain cards, it makes me think of marriage, engagement, living together. It's a celebration, and it's coming together, and it sometimes represents represents legit like engagements things of that nature and this if it doesn't represent a person outside of Amberlynn that like sometimes this represents the church or a person that guides us on what we feel or see as like a spiritual path to a higher self but when I see it with certain cards like this or I think of living together marriage um so I'm feeling like when I asked about, uh, you know, is she honest? Does she feel she's honest with herself? I think these are the things that she feels that she's honest about, but maybe deep down, like, these are the hidden feelings. Or she does feel these deep down, but maybe doesn't vocalize it, you know, um, to the outside. Like, she keeps it to herself. Um, this could actually also represent the desire, the deep desire for a connection and maybe even a marriage, okay? I don't know if she's expressed that, verbal, like, verbalized that, but... And I'm going to say... Because, the like, justice is all about the scales, right? The scales. The scales of truth. <laughs> um, with these two skulls here, and I think that um, there's two sides. That Amberlynn sees herself as someone that has two sides to them, to their energy. Um, and... I think that they recognize to a certain degree that there's imbalance to their scales. Like, so the death card being here, judgment, and the six of wands. I feel like there's a certain, um, degree of, uh, okay, this, because I, I felt this and I didn't know if I should say it, I feel like this person, like, hates themselves, um, that they feel such an imbalance like, they just uh, feel like there's this 
energy in this card looks like a fallen angel. That's what it reminds me of. And then I see the death card here. Um, yeah, I just think there's a lot of heavy, deep feelings that this person actually, like Amberlynn, actually maybe thinks a, a lot about um, death. I don't know if they vocalize that, but I'm, I just feel like that's what I felt, so I said it. I think they think a lot about that, and just in general, either that or they think about someone who is no longer here, or someone that is not in their life anymore. And I think that they judge themselves really harshly. Um, <gasps> I feel like they judge themselves more harshly um, than anyone else could ever judge them. I know that's hard to believe, but that's what I feel. Or that's how they see it, anyway. And this is all about wanting to be celebrated, um, the Six of Wands, by others for our accomplishments and stuff. So this, uh, this could be... And then this is the seven, representing choices. So this could talk about how Amberlynn actually um, understands how people feel like because she doesn't commit to the choices. Because I've seen some of the... Basically, if you're watching this, you know Amberlynn's situation. So it's like... This could represent how the followers, she desires to be celebrated and she feels the judgment. Um, she, see, you know, the choices, everyone's always like, it's your choice, you're not making good choices. I feel like um, she does judge herself and... She might. I don't know. I'm holding these and just feeling like um, she might just deep down feel like she's already made. Uh, this is what I feel, so I'm just going to say it. I feel like deep down she might feel like she's already went so far down that there's no... There's no balancing the scales at this point. Um, that's what I felt. You get what I'm saying? Like, I just felt that. Like... So, making the videos that she makes from the start um, could have been just, like, her trying to find an audience to admire or celebrate her in some sort of way. And she may have made the choice a long time ago, just like within, that she already was so imbalanced and at the end game of the ED and, the, you know, the binging and being in that place physically that, like, there was never any turning back. That's what I felt, so... That's what I'm saying. So, general reading. Just, you know, putting that out there. Um, how does Amberlynn feel about her followers? So I don't really know if she feels that she's an honest person. I think that she feels like she has her own truth uh, that was like I don't know I got a lot of uh, a lot of feelings there from that question so how does she feel about her audience her followers <laughs> betrayed <laughs> it's the ten of swords um yeah, what, what does she feel about her audience?
Okay, with this Ace of uh, Cups on the bottom. The Four of Swords. Was... So this, to me, kind of says... It came out in reverse, if it matters. Um, so... This, this says to me that what she truly feels... Because I'm asking how she feel about her audience. That a lot of what she really feels about the audience... Um, she probably thinks about them more so than she wants to, is what I'm feeling. That, again, when this came out before, what I said, a person that's been through a sort of war, a battle, and is resting in what appears to be like a meditative type state where they're resting. So she probably feels like a lot of the audience makes her feel exhausted. That's what I feel. That's, that's what I'm going to say. And that she probably thinks about it more so than she wants to. That's what I get from that. And again, with this card, I'm going to say similar type of feeling as what I felt before from it. She might feel like she needs the emotional... Whatever she gets, <clears throat> the whether she's emotionally fulfilled to some degree by creating content, okay? She gets something out of it. When I see this card, I feel like what she gets out of it doesn't really fill her up, but she's put herself out there in this way, and she's in it, and she requires some sort of, like, uh, hand to, to carry her in this. So she gets something out of creating content and from the audience that she can't get on her own, she feels. Interesting. So... All right, this is how she feels about the audience, her followers. The Wheel of Fortune, this card represents, the wheel is life. Life spins, the wheel turns, we can't control the wheel. I usually say this in my readings, um, we can't control the wheel of life, but we have to control ourselves. This, for me, is saying, and next to this is uh, the Nine of Swords, which is the Nightmare card. This is being in a nightmare. This is sometimes losing sleep because of it. Ha, like, it's a, it's a fucking nightmare. And then the moon. So, how she feels? She feels like she has no control over her audience. Okay? She might... This might represent her desire to control. That she wishes she could control more... The audience, I guess. Um, and like how they felt about her and things. Um, it represents like the feeling of being just spinning on a wheel that you can't control. So she, with this nightmare card being here and this moon, it's like she, she could... <laughs> Her audience, when she views them in, I guess, a negative way, like, not being supportive of her and her life choices and, and stuff, because the Wheel of Fortune is, like, her lack of control. When I guess people viewing her as not having control of her situation makes her feel like she's in a nightmare. Um, it really affects her. This is what this is saying, okay? Um, the moon... This is like the balance between the the beast and the cardinal self, like the cardinal beast and the domesticated self. These are things hidden, sometimes being in an illusion. She could feel like her audience looks at her like she's crazy, like she's not in the right state of mind. This, the audience and the, the dark side of it, which she views as being negative, could actually make her feel crazy sometimes. Um, that's the, the moon card, that's what I'm feeling from this right now in this. That the lack of control, 
being in a nightmare, literally being in a nightmare about about uh, how she's being viewed sometimes and seen can make her feel like she's going crazy. They, the audience can make her, her followers can make her feel crazy sometimes. The Hermit. This is, uh, and this is with the Seven of Swords. My sneaky seven. So, she could feel like her audience, um, I'm gonna say, like, this, like, hides behind the screen. Right? Like, they're the hermit energy, like, they think they know everything. Because the hermit is, like, the wise energy. Sometimes it's an energy that has ghosted. Like, if I see it in a relationship reading, sometimes I'll be like, that person is ghosting, they're thinking of ghosting, or they're going within. But, like, I'm feeling, this is her feeling like people think they know better than her. Like, they're wiser and smarter. And she might feel like, uh, she has a bunch of uh, people that think they know better. She might view them as energies that want to hurt her, that want to, um, that are lying to her. She might literally feel like people that, and this is what I'm feeling when I'm holding this, so I'm going to say it, that she might look at a lot of the, the audience, the you know, when she views them as negative, uh, non, not supportive, um, as energies that just want to, like, steal her energy, steal her time, okay? And that's what I feel from that. So, I was going to ask, what does she gain by creating content? I'm curious, what does she feel, what does she feel like she's gaining by creating content overall? What does Amberlynn feel like she gains by creating content? What does Amber? oh, I forgot about that. What does Amberlynn gain by creating content? That's interesting, because I feel like I got the same card. I used a different deck for um, Chantel's Fruity Beauty reading about the same thing, having to do with cre why do, we, do they create content. The Chariot. Um... So, five of coins is on the bottom, and I'm going to say, this is what I feel, and the, the, the card, what this card means is, uh, it's about feeling left out in the cold, it's about feeling like a door is closed in one's face, it's feeling like, um, financially burdened and alone, and sick, sometimes sick. So, I feel like, I'm asking, like, why does she create content? And I'm going to say this is saying to, to, to gain some sort of financial um, gain because it keeps her from being feeling left completely in the cold financially. And she might gain some sort of uh, friendships, relationships, things where she feels like she's not completely in the cold. Okay. And the chariot, before I look underneath it, because there's a few that came out, um, the chariot represents cancer energy. Those cancer traits, which for me is like the person that has a hard shell on the outside, but they're mushy and have a lot of emotions on the inside, the crab. Um, and the chariot represents a person that, and I say this, I said this in the other reading with the other deck, that I got the chariot card. It's a person, when it represents a person, that has a destination they want to reach, right? There's a road to get to that destination. It's just a matter of how they're going to 
the road ahead that they take to, to reach the destination. Will it be a straight road? Um, in Am Chantel's reading, in the deck I used, the, the chariot has two horses that are moving very quickly. In this card, you have an energy, it's very sloth-looking, um, it's, it's battered, bandaged, it has the brakes on, actually, there's a moon there, which I'm going to associate with the moon card we saw before, the feelings involved with that card, the feeling, like, lost sometimes in, um, one's self, maybe feeling disillusioned, in an illusion, uh, type of, type of state. Amberlynn might be the kind of person that daydreams a lot. I'll just put that out there, because I found it. But, when it comes to the content creation, like, why does she create content? What I said here, it, in a way, she feels it takes her out of the cold, keeps her from being totally, um, financially burdened and stuff. Um, that she started to create content and still looks at it like there's a purpose to why she started, okay, in her mind. Like, she wanted to have some sort of success in creating videos, and she's going to do what she has to do to have success in that. And there was a goal from the beginning. Juggling. Two of Pentacles, okay, Two of Wands is being at a crossroad. The Magician, there's a lot here. Four of Wands again, the Hierophant, Queen of Cups. So why does she create content? What does she gain? Well, she creates it because from the beginning she had a, a goal in her mind that she wanted to have success and have, a, you know... A destination that it was going to help her reach her goal and bring her down a path where it would take her out of what she felt was the cold. She might have juggled about and been at a crossroads about the type of uh, content she was going to create. Maybe this has to do with um, either being uh, someone that was going to utilize binging, uh, making videos of that nature, um, which she might have felt like she recognized that would maybe hurt her more physically, but still get her down that path, or trying to heal herself and utilize the audience um, and the whole forum of, you know, losing weight, going down that path. It might just represent the juggling. Um, it might represent the a knowing within that she does juggle between those things, wanting to heal and wanting to just let herself be gluttonous. Um, being caught between the feeling of like I'm always going to be this way I was already like I said before with the cards I pulled like already already so deep and in the the illness like is there any turning back kind of thing like already feeling like a battered um, person when they started it. Um, so this, I'm just feeling this. This could represent, the magician is the energy that has, can manifest and create, and has everything it needs to create that and manifest whatever um, new beginning it desires. Like, everything's there for that energy. And I'm going to say, though, that I'm really feeling Amber Lynn... Um, feels like uh, this has to do with um, the content. I feel like this represents the working with another energy, someone that they're living with, that that manifests 
um, more magic for them in their eyes that they recognize when they have someone else, a person, um, another energy. Again, these two cards, when what they mean to me, that uh, <clears throat> it helps their content and that, yeah, just the relationship aspect. Um, and I'm going to say that they feel like This is what I feel, so I'm going to say it, that they feel like um, in the relationship that the person that they're in the connection with, right, whoever that is at the time, brings magic, makes things more magical, literally, um... Makes them feel more alive, like they're connected, like there's more balance to them as an energy when they're in a connection. And I feel like this is saying, like, they might feel like or know mm, that they suck, they suck the love out of the person they're with. That's what I feel when I see this card. <clears throat> that, um... And the Queen of Cups sometimes is an energy that's like, it, it's imbalanced in how it's just emotionally imbalanced sometimes. Um, but I just see this energy, it looks all dried up and stuff, and I'm just like, shh, Amber Lynn might deep down feel like either creating content, right? Like she has to have a relationship. It makes the content better for her. <clears throat> Bring, it brings magic into her life and her energy. But she might feel like... Um, it actually ruins the relationships, ultimately. But she might not know how to... Like, she doesn't know how to... Not do that, though, is what I felt. And that's what I'm feeling there. It's weird. Um, what else did I have here? I was going to ask, how does she feel about herself and, and her relationship with others? I think, I'm, let's just focus on, um, how does she feel about herself? deep down, even though I think we already kind of touched on that, but let's just see. How does Amberlynn feel about herself? Like, is she a narcissist? What's going on with that? How does she feel about herself? I think there's a duality, a love-hate relationship with herself. Okay. King of Blades, which is the King of Swords, and it's the Three of Cups, and I see down here a Ten of uh, Swords, which is like feeling betrayed, usually by others. Um, yeah, I'm, you know what? The Three of Cups is like, like for me, celebrating with friends, it's like other energies. How does she feel about herself? She might, like, hold a lot of, um, blame towards... She might feel like she's been betrayed by others. Um, I think she feels like... Blades are... Or swords are... It's like intelligence... It's, um, clarity. So, this is what represents her in the beginning, right? And I said, and this is the queen of, uh, of blades. And I said, this for me is an energy that when I see this, it's like a person I feel, like, cuts off their nose despite their face kind of thing. So, that's how she's represented. But she sees herself as the king of, of swords. 
Um, she m might feel like she's very misunderstood. That she's been betrayed. She sees herself as someone that's been betrayed by friends and loved ones. And she sees herself as a strong energy that holds knowledge. Um, and is ready to fight for what they believe in. Yeah, she might actually feel within that she is betray a betrayed energy that um, has to like defend themselves and stand up for their truth. Okay. What does she desire out of life? What does Amberlyn desire out of life? The Four of Wands. Connections. She desires connections. To live with someone, to have um, relationships. That's way too many, I'm not even looking. What does she desire out of life? Why is the Four of Wands here? The Three of Pentacles on the bottom representing a desire to work with others. Um, with others that, that I'm going to say, she desires to work with others to have, that have the same vision as her. Because that's what that's about. So again, this for me is like living with someone, engagement, um, a balanced connection. She desires uh, out of life to be celebrated. That's what the Six of Wands is. This betrayal card is here in Temperance. So, I'm going to say... With this Ten here again. She has a desire. I mean, this is the card of betrayal. So... This is either saying that she desires um, a connection and to be celebrated by someone specifically that she felt betrayed by. This could be saying, like, the followers, the people that she feels like um, she has to prove something to or that, you know, she has this need to be accepted by. Or it's a specific person that she feels feels she betrayed or betrayed her that she desires um, to be in a connection with again and to work with again. And temperance is a Sag energy. This is an, uh, a card that represents balance and patience. So she could have a desire that people are more patient with her and maybe view her as a more um, sensitive, per like to recognize the sensitivity that she has, okay? That's what I felt, um, that she wants people to have patience with her and what she's working on, all right? Now, that's what I feel from these cards. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that because I already went too long and I'll just end it like I started it with, um, if you guys have any questions specifically that you want me to ask that I didn't, um, for Amber Lynn, please leave it in the comments. Um, same thing for the last reading I did on the foodie beauty Chantal. Uh, and if you want me to do, I was thinking of doing Jazz Jennings and her mom. Or if there's anyone else uh, like that you want me to do readings about or focus on, leave it in the comments. If you want to see specific zodiac signs, types of readings, leave it in the comments. Let me know, guys. Um, see you next time.